Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this. This is the in-person world premiere of the true story of Jan the real story of January 6th, part two, The Long Road Home. For starters, I wanted to thank Senator Johnson and his office for sponsoring this event and helping us host it here in the US Capitol. I th think it's a, a highly appropriate place to do this. So very, very briefly, you know, we're very, very proud to be letting the people know right now that the Epoch Times by paid subscribers has become the fourth largest newspaper in the country. And I think that's a test, this type of reporting that we have here, led by Joe Hanman, who we'll, I'll be introducing later after the show with a kind of star-studded panel of some of the uh, key players in the documentary itself. It's this kind of reporting that has led us to this success. Um, we started off in July of 2022 with the real story of January 6th, part one, okay? That has been our kind of gangbusters most popular documentary. We found a lot of original footage. We totally broke the conventional narrative around January 6th with that documentary. Um, that was followed up by, uh, in August, we published uh, the January 6th tapes. And by the way, this is all Joe Hanneman leading in, in, in his reporting. Um, and then we, we found further, we got exclusive access to the J6 footage and we developed uh, a, a, a deeper understanding of what actually happened on the ground. Now this film is a little bit of a different approach. January 6th fundamentally changed America, I think, in a lot of ways. And what we're looking at in this film, in part two, is what has actually happened, what has happened to America? How has uh, our relationship with law enforcement changed? What, what are some of the people who were on the site and committed misdemeanors, for example, which was the vast majority of the people who were charged with anything, how have they been treated by the system? And once again, we have you know, Joe Hanneman leading us in that. So without further ado, uh, Senator Johnson, he's been one of the very few congressional members that's been following this issue very closely, following it publicly, I might add, uh, which is, of course, greatly appreciated. And uh, he's going to say a few words now. Thank, thank you, Jan. Uh, thank all of you for attending. Uh, thank you, Epic Times for uh, being the kind of publication, the, the, the free press that our founders actually envisioned that is just crucial to maintaining our freedom and, and our democracy. Um, but let me quick read the words of the First Amendment. Congress may, shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That's the first freedom in the First Amendment. But then right after that is abridging the freedom of speech the next listed is or of the press, or of the right of the people to peace, peaceably assemble and petition the government for a redress of grievances. I mean, to me, the First Amendment is so applicable to January 6th. Um, we haven't even begun to be told the full story, which means the truth about January 6th. You know, they always say, to the victor go the spoils. The victor writes the history. And unfortunately, in November of 2020, Democrats had the full sweep. They had all the levers of power. And they wrote the history of January 6th. But there are so many questions that haven't even been asked, much less answered, to get the full story, to get the full truth. But one of the questions I had, and I asked my staff if we quick put this together, is, you know, I remember hearing the, the, the mantra of thousands of armed insurrectionists, you know, which I'm the guy, by the way, in the hearing in, in February where we had FBI witness, Jill Sanborn, uh, asked her, okay, we, we hear thousands of armed insurrectionists. So no, most Americans, when they think of arms, they think of firearms. And I know you can use other things as weapons, and they did. But most people think of arms as firearms. So I asked the FBI, how many firearms if we had thousands of armed insurrections, how many firearms did the FBI confiscate on January 6th? I had no idea what the answer would be. But the answer was a mic drop moment when she said zero. So when you, when you piece it all together, the first use of the term that we could find 
of armed insurrection was Nancy Pelosi on January 6th. That was followed by a press release by Leader Schumer quoting that again, that this was an armed insurrection. Uh, Democrat Congressman from Pennsylvania, Connor Lamb, then talked about a briefing where potentially 4,000 armed patriots might disrupt the inauguration. That was on January 12th. On January 14th, Representative Jackie Speer, a Democrat from California, was the first person to say that President Trump organized, baited, engaged, encouraged, and unleashed thousands of armed insurrectionists who laid siege to our nation's capital on January 6th. So there, there you go. Within eight days of, of January 6th, the narrative was set. This was an armed insurrection. L later in February 7th, Senator Schumer said, there's no debate to be had here. January 6th was an armed insurrection. And unfortunately, we had Republicans parrot the exact same phrase. Leader McConnell on February 8th, it was a violent insurrection. Now, I came back and I was highly criticized shortly after January 6th by saying I, I was never afraid on January 6th. Now, I was there. You know, they, they sealed down the Senate building for about, you know, the Senate chamber for about 10 minutes. Then, you know, Capitol Police came and God bless them. And they ushered us out and I, I walked back to my office. Um, and then I witnessed on the TV, you know, the violence. And we all condemned it, by the way, right? None of us condone the violence. We condemned it. We want to see those people prosecuted to the full extent of the law. But I also saw on the TV camera these supposed insurrectionists stay within the rope lines. Now we're seeing more and more videos that, unfortunately, the defense attorneys, the defendants, haven't had access to to help defend themselves. But again, the narrative was set. This was an armed insurrection. We, we've been battling that now for three years. And I would say nothing could be further from the truth. One of the reasons I said, and that I wasn't afraid on January 6th, is I knew who most of those people in the crowd were. Not personally, but in Wisconsin, we're battleground state. I went to a number of Trump rallies. And the people I saw attending Trump rallies, and I knew the vast majority of people that came to January 6th were patriots. People that are God-fearing, country-loving. They fervently love this country. They respect law enforcement. They would never even contemplate committing a crime or engaging in acts of violence. The vast majority of people that came on January 6th fitted that profile. I mentioned the hearings that uh, I was no longer chairman of the committee, so I couldn't control them. I was just a member now. I asked the FBI witness about how many armed insurrectionists, but I also entered in the first hearing the, the written testimony of J. Michael Waller, who taught at the War College, a very trained observer, went to January 6th to observe, wrote his 14-page testimony, observations, without ever looking at any news media. I entered that into the record in our first dual committee hearing. I was immediately called and attacked by Senator Klobuchar as being a conspiracy theorist and having entered a conspiracy theory into the record. Well, that testimony by J. Michael Waller has pretty well stood the test of time. He talked about, first of all, no police presence at all on the west side of the Capitol. None that he could see. He talked about four distinct groups. He called them provocateurs. I would call them agitators. I think uh, what you're going to see here in the video that Joe Hanneman has provided in, in this documentary, that that is a pretty good description. There were people at the front, didn't attend the speech at the, uh, the ellipse. They were there. They were there to agitate, to create violence. That's the truth. We need to know more truth about January 6th. So to kind of wrap up here, I talked about you know, all the questions haven't even been asked, much less answered. I had a long list. I want to hit the key ones. First of all, why was there such a shocking lack of security? You know, I've, I've written this in my oversight letters. I mean, is, are there standard security postures for different events? Now, I was there during the Brett Kavanaugh hearing. I mean, we were, we were briefed in terms of what to expect, you know, where, where to go, you know, what security is going to be out there. There was no briefing before January 6th, and, and yet there were estimates of potentially more than a million people attending, which was way more than people protesting the Brett Kavanaugh hearings. 
you know, what was the security plan? We still don't know to this day. What did Pelosi, McConnell, Roy Blunt, Zoe Lofgren, these are the individuals, these are the leaders in, char in the charge of the Committee of Security. What did they know? Have they ever been interviewed? You know, there is a huge discrepancy in terms of the crowd size. Why? You know, the Secret Service estimates were, and I think January 6th committee, the Democrat, the highly partisan committee, they're saying, you know, 10, 20,000. And yet, talking to Joe Hanneman, he, he's talking about 250,000, maybe even more. It's a huge discrepancy. Why is that? I would ask how many people actually committed acts of violence? You know, what we do know, and by the way, we know exactly why they have this narrative of thousands of armed insurrections. We just saw President Biden use it at his first campaign speech of the year. He said, since that day, more than 1,200 people have been charged with assault in the Capitol. Nearly 900 of them have been convicted or pled guilty. Collectively, to date, they've been sentenced to more than 840 years in prison. That sounds like a pretty serious event, right? Do those people really deserve 840 years in prison? Some of them deserve real prison time. But what is the justification for these SWAT raid arrests? Okay? So again, there are just so many unanswered questions. I just have to thank Epic Times for being those journalists. They're utilize, utilizing our First Amendment right to freedom of the press, freedom of speech, being the honest broker in terms of trying to expose and tell the American people the truth. And all I could ask of, of anybody here in the audience or listening in, in a later videotape is please, Try and find out what the truth is. Discern it. You know, look up sites like Epic Times. Subscribe. You know, learn the truth and spread the truth. Be evangelists for the truth because that's the only thing that can save our nation from the radical leftists that have infiltrated every institution of this country. They are the danger, of demo not, they are the danger to democracy, not the patriots, the vast majority of patriots that showed up to exercise their First Amendment rights on January 6th. So again, thank you, Epic Times.